All right, so today I'm going to be presenting to you the norming of space, spatializing race and poverty. From the beginning of American history, socioeconomic status has been spatialized. By this, I mean connected to and inherently related to space. The difference between wealth and poverty was determined by the ownership of space, and these mechanisms of ownership were undoubtedly influenced by white supremacist and racist ideology. This is part of what can explain why settler colonialists stole indigenous lands and relocated native people to reservations. But today, the intertwining of race and poverty is most pronounced within urban spaces. And this was no accident. It was the result of deliberate racist zoning policies that began with redlining. Next slide. Here I'm using my hometown of Sacramento as an example. These maps created in the 1930s by the Homeowners Loan Corporation designated which areas were quote unquote undesirable and of higher risk to default on loans. The areas in yellow, orange, and red were predominantly black and were denied mortgages and other financial investment opportunities. This not only prevented people of color from securing mortgages and moving out of the inner city into the white suburbs, but it simultaneously made those urban spaces where they were forced to live less economically viable. It was because of these racist policies that, um, next slide, please. These neighborhoods you see here, Fruit Ridge, Lemon Hill, Parkway, and Florin remained predominantly black. As you can see on the right slide, you can see that these have the highest percentages of black or African-American peoples, where, and also on the left, lower percentages of um, income viability and uh, lower incomes. So it was because of these redlining racist policies that these neighborhoods in Sacramento, Florida, and Fruit Ridge stayed predominantly black. And as investment decreased, property taxes began to dive, schools deteriorated, and public services declined, and home ownership's rate fell. It was because of this that these areas became what they are known as today, which is quote unquote, the ghetto. Next slide. But now that we understand how urban spaces simultaneously became associated with poverty and with blackness, I'd like to introduce a concept called the norming of space, which is introduced by Charles Mills in his 1997 book, The Racial Contract, as the depiction of space as dominated by individuals of a certain race. While at the same time, the norming of an individual is partially achieved by spacing it, that is representing it as imprinted with the characteristics of a certain space. It's essentially the idea that certain types of people create certain, certain types of spaces create certain types of people, and that characterizations of these spaces shape the way we view people who come from them. The word ghetto is an example of this relationship. Although we should remember to consider other variables like class and even gender, the word ghetto tends to primarily be used to characterize Black people, despite its history with the relationship to anti-Semitism and Jewish ghettos. Because although the word ghetto is so strongly related to space, it's also something that we cannot separate from race. We've seen how poverty is associated with the urban and how the urban became associated with blackness and thus blackness with poverty. And these racialized and spatialized stereotypes, it's something that black Americans struggle to break away from. Indeed, racialized stereotypes of black people have been and continue to be weaponized against black people and black communities and other communities of color as well. So as we continue to spatially analyze the urban, we must always remember to consider the racism that has hurt these areas, as well as the black and brown individuals and communities who reside there. Next slide. Lastly, I'd like to end on a land acknowledgement and that we should always remember to, to acknowledge the stolen indigenous land that we all live on. UC Santa Barbara is located on the traditional land of the Chumash people and my hometown of Sacramento, which I use as an example, is on the Nisian and Maidu regions. So. It's with great honor and privilege that we recognize the original owners of these land, and it's with great privilege that we commit to continuing to learn how to be better stewards of the land we inhabit as hell, as well as we as we continue to study spatial studies. Thank you.